The blockchain scaling wars are absolutely heating up. There are so many different layer two scaling solutions coming out of the scene right now that are competing with one another to try to, you know, gain dominant market share in this space. And you might be thinking like, what's the difference between all these different scaling solutions and which one's the best? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the top blockchain scaling solutions that are on the market right now, how they're different from one another. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So scalability is one of the biggest bottlenecks to blockchain mass adoption. In order for this technology to really take off, it has to support the number of transactions per second to accommodate a lot of different people using it at once. And also that transaction finality, the transaction time itself for each individual transaction for the technology to rival other consumer financial applications that we have right now. And so this is the problem of scalability. And one of the ways to fix this problem, which is really what the Ethereum ecosystem is doing, is to work improve scalability at the layer one level. So to improve the actual blockchain itself, but also introduce these things called layer two scaling solutions. This is basically where you build a second environment where you can offload some of the computational activity onto a second layer that actually derives its security from the base layer one blockchain itself. And we're currently at an inflection point where we have lots of different layer two scaling solutions actually on the market right now. And they're gaining adoption very rapidly. And so a lot of people are trying to wonder like, hey, what's the difference between these things? You know, which one's the best? Well, today I want to introduce you to a tool that can actually help you, uh, you know, see the difference for this. And I'm personally going to explain the difference between some of the top scaling solutions right now. So this is l2beat.com. So this is not like a sponsored video or anything like that. This is just a resource that I found recently that I thought was super helpful. I want to share with you all today for your own research and just your understanding of how this space works. So what it does is it actually attracts the activity and also the value secured on each different layer two scaling solution that's currently live. And so you can right now at the time to record this video that the amount of uh, cryptocurrency or value locked on layer two scaling solutions is about $1 billion and is climbing pretty rapidly. And you can see brand new layer twos that have come onto the scene like Arbitrum, which are growing at an insane pace since it launched recently. And so you can see, um, you know, about 20 different layer twos listed here. The value locked in each layer, the percentage change of the last seven days, the market share between the layer twos, and the purpose. Like, is it specifically for one specific app, like like the DY at DX exchange here? Is it for payments, or is it a universal layer two like Optimus and Arbitrum, where any developer can essentially take their applications and put it on the layer two? So you can see some of these high-level differences right here and the technology that each one uses, like uh, ZKR is for ZK Rollups. If you actually hover over this, you can see the name written out here, Optimistic Rollups, all that type of stuff. And so you might even be wondering, like, hey, what are these different scaling technologies uh, use like what's the trade-offs because in the day you always have trade-offs when you're enhancing scalability and so you can see those uh, pretty clearly on this table here you can see the name you can see uh, how each scalability solution works what are some of the trade-offs and risks okay you can actually click through to each page and see details about each scaling solution with a detailed risk profile in addition to um, you know the TVL or the value locked on uh, each individual layer two itself. All right, so now let's actually get into some differences between some of these layer two scaling solutions themselves. So let's actually start off with different categories of scaling solutions, and you can actually see those on the FAQ page, okay? So if you go to FAQ here, um, you can go down and look at uh, this, where it lists the main categories of L2s. So it's zero knowledge rollups, optimistic rollups, validium, plasma and state pools. So the first one that I'll talk about right now are optimistic rollups, okay? Because this is one that's gaining really quick traction and I'll explain why. So optimistic rollups, how they work is they they create this second environment for transactions to be you know processed. That's really what a layer two does. And it settles the eventual result back on top of the Ethereum chain. So optimistic rollups, how it does this is it batches them up, it rolls them up, and then includes them back onto the main Ethereum chain. And it does this in a separate environment with its own set of validators that uses fraud proofs and keeps the data on L1 Ethereum. So why do I think that optimistic rollups are going to take off so quickly? Well, one of the biggest reasons is that essentially for optimistic rollups, you can typically just take an application that's written in Solidity that's purposed for layer one Ethereum environment and simply just port it over to layer two for optimistic rollups with minimal code changes. This makes it really easy for people to migrate and to bootstrap a new ecosystem in this layer two environment. And of the optimistic rollup scaling solutions, uh, the two biggest ones right now that are uh, kind of competing for market share are optimism and also 
uh, Arbitrum. And so now we can actually talk about the difference between those and see how you can compare like the trade-offs that each one makes. So the main difference is I'm going to call out from a tweet thread here from Chris. So uh, definitely full credit. I'll put a link to this down in the description below if I remember, or you can just go look it up here. But of course, you know, they're both rollups. They're both optimistic rollups, meaning that they use fraud proofs. They use sequencers for instant finality, and they have generic cross-chain messaging that allows them to basically create bridges so that you can get on and off of the layer two scaling solution itself. Now, the key difference here is actually in the fraud proofs. So this is really the mechanism that steps in whenever people disagree on what the state should be. So that's the whole problem of consensus with blockchain technology. When you have a copy of data on multiple computers, all those computers have to agree on what the state actually says or the, the actual ledger itself. And so you always want mechanisms in here that uh, try to punish bad behavior. So you never want somebody to manipulate data to try to say, well, I have more money than somebody else or, you know, I changed somebody's balance. You never want them to modify the history. And so how does it implement this? Well, that's what the fraud proof mechanism is. So optimism uses single round fraud proofs. This means that L1 executes the whole layer two transaction on chain to verify the state route. The benefit here is this makes that uh, fraud proofs are instant, but it does have some trade-offs. So basically you need to supervise transactions transaction execution for the OVM, which kind of means you have to rewrite the Ethereum virtual machine to make this happen. And there's some other you know, trade-offs here, but another one is that basically you need on-chain state routes after each transaction, which really increase transaction costs. Now, Arbitrum is different. So it uses multi-round fraud proofs as opposed to single-round fraud proofs. Basically, you can speed things up or dumb it down by doing a binary uh, search, which basically means you just traverse a binary tree between two parties. And the first time where you find an opcode where they disagree, you can just stop there and find a discrepancy. So it has some benefits. Basically, you only have to post uh, one state proof on chain for a, a lot of different transactions instead of one by one, and you're not bound by the layer one uh, gas limit. But there's a drawback. It requires Ethereum virtual machine to Arbitrum virtual machine translation, although this is automatic, and it's a little bit slower. And now, so those are some of the primary technical differences from a high level, but you can actually use this tool here to see what that concretely means in terms of the risk profile for each you know layer two scaling solution. So you can break it down between optimum and Arbitrum here. So for optimism, you know, you can see situations where funds can be stolen. Basically, if an invalid state route is submitted to the system, if a contract release receives a malicious code upgrade, the source code of unverified contracts contains malicious code, which some of these things are true in other environments as well. The funds can be lost if there's any mistakes in a highly complex OVM implementation. And then also here's cases where uh, minor extractable value can be extracted. And on and on uh, for some uh, you know other details, which you can browse a page for. So for Arbitrum, there are similar risks. Uh, basically, if no one checks the published state, Fraud proofs assume that at least one honest and able validator. Same thing, basically, a contract re receives a malicious code upgrade. There's no delay on upgrades. Similarly, funds can be lost if there's a highly, you know, complex AVM implementation versus the OVM implementation and same risks of, you know, MEV extraction. All right, so those are the key differences between something like Arbitrum and Optimism, which are both, you know, competing for one another uh, for, you know, layer two mindshare. All right, so those are some of the major differences between Arbitrum and Optimism, which are really competing against one another to gain market share uh, for the the optimistic roll-up space, all right? But you can turn on this list for sure and look at other, you know, scaling solutions like zero-knowledge roll-up solutions. This is fundamentally different from uh, optimistic roll-ups, but you can see lots of different zero-knowledge-based solutions on here. Uh, many of them are, are purpose-built for the particular applications themselves. And so you can browse through that, but here's, here's one of the reasons why, and you can actually compare different layer two scaling solutions uh, with this, you know, uh, table that I showed you before. So with zero knowledge rollups, basically validity proofs uh, are how they secure transactions and also has data on layer one Ethereum. But one of the biggest difference between zero knowledge rollups and optimistic rollups is there's significant code changes required in order to create a real, you know, zero knowledge based implementation of an application. And also the actual technology for ZK rollups is very challenging to implement for a general purpose compared to something like optimistic rollups as far as the progress that we're on on each of these timelines right now. And so I do think that we'll see zero knowledge roll-ups based solutions in a more general sense come out later on that can have some significant competitive advantages to optimistic roll-up technology in terms of performance. So one of the big drawbacks of optimistic roll-ups is the withdrawal time. So 
because there's some delay in transaction finality, it can take up to seven days in some cases to withdraw funds uh, from an optimistic rollup based environment. Um, but there are protocols coming in that can help, you know, circumvent that and actually, you know, speed up those withdrawals. But with zero knowledge based solutions, you don't have that problem. And so that's a huge benefit there. And so if you want to see like some of the other layer two scaling solutions that are, you know, uh, out there, Validium, Plasma, State Pools, you can read more about them on this uh, website. And they've got some pretty good FAQs, pretty much anything you might want to know about, um, you know, layer twos is pr pr contained on the site, you know, other, other things that may not be listed here, you might scratch your head and say, oh, what about like Polygon? I thought that was a layer two. Well, um, they're kind of the opinion that I am where, you know, basically uh, layer twos are different from side chains. So something has its own consensus mechanism, it uses its own cryptocurrency, but doesn't actually eventually settle transactions or drive security from Ethereum itself, then it's a side chain. It's not a layer two. And so you can see that pretty clearly, uh, you know, echoed and, and expressed here. And you can, you know, read, read a lot more like that. So this is a great resource if you want to compare different layer two scaling solutions and understand how they work and also just track the space over time and watch, you know, the trend grow about the amount of value actually locked on these. And you can sort of start to see which ones gain this dominant market market share as these percentage uh, points change. And so if you're watching the optimistic roll-up space and you, you favor optimism over Arbitrum or vice versa, maybe Arbitrum over optimism, then you can watch you know these different ecosystems take off in real time and kind of stay two steps ahead of the market here. So that's an overview of the different layer two scaling solutions that are out right now, how they're like, how they're different. And here's a tool that you can use to evaluate them yourselves and also track these user statistics and the growth of the entire ecosystem over time. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University. <laughs>